today? A day after Richard Branson sent satellites to space and three weeks before Jeff Bezos plans to fly there himself, we get a look at the state of the billionaire space race. Plus, Krispy Kreme has a not-so-sweet market debut after a busy week of IPOs. And finally, you'll soon be able to buy Robinhood stock on Robinhood the stock trading app. It's officially going public. I'm Mackenzie Segalos, and this is CNBC After Hours. Stocks kicked off the second half of 2021 with another record high. The S&P posted its sixth record close in a row, and the Dow jumped about a third of a percent higher. The Nasdaq saw another SPAC IPO today, with rocket builder Astra going public in a deal that netted the company half a billion dollars. It joins a slew of companies betting on space. Just yesterday, we saw Richard Branson's Virgin Orbit send seven satellites into space. And earlier this week, Elon Musk tweeted his frustration with FAA regulations after a plane flew into restricted airspace and forced SpaceX to scrap a launch. Not to mention, Amazon founder Jeff Bezos has big plans to head out to the edge of our atmosphere later this month. So we asked CNBC's space reporter Michael Sheets to explain the latest in the billionaire space race. When you look at the space race as a whole, as you especially have to focus on the space billionaires, Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, and Richard Branson. You have Elon Musk's SpaceX, which has basically three companies in one, then in the Branson corner, you have his two companies, Virgin Galactic, which is publicly traded, and Virgin Orbit. Then you have Bezos. Bezos has Blue Origin, and that company is divided into several different pieces. When you talk about how much money these guys can make in space, the most lucrative aspect of it actually isn't launching rockets, it's putting and operating satellites in space. So when you look at the broader industry, which brings in somewhere near uh, $400 billion in revenue a year, the most lucrative pieces of that are the people who operate uh, and provide broadband and telecommunications via satellite. The launch piece of it is surprisingly small. It's only a, a few billion dollars a year. The leader in the space race is definitely SpaceX. They're kind of the one to beat. They go head to head with the kind of incumbent company, United Launch Alliance. That's a joint venture of Boeing and Lockheed Martin that also launches rockets. I mean, they've really uh, pioneered and pushed the boundaries of reusing rockets and not just uh, throwing them away after each uh, mission, but also landing them. Jeff Bezos' spaceflight plan for July 20th is incredibly important for the industry because just like SpaceX, launching astronauts uh, for the first time in a decade from US soil uh, that was last year this mission is someone you know who's put so much money and time and effort who is also incredibly high profile you're talking about the wealthiest man in the world putting himself and him, his life on the line to demonstrate that his system is safe and can fly people regularly the race between Branson and Bezos dates back to the early 2000s, actually. Virgin Galactic was formed in 2004. Bezos created Blue Origin in 2000. So you're talking about two decades of these companies, each trying to get themselves into space. And the you know stated premise from the very beginning for each of these companies was that the founders themselves wanted to fly. So I'd say we're probably a few decades away from space travel looking like what commercial aviation looks like because you're taking so much risk. and. And just like in aviation, you know, humans were not designed to fly. We don't have wings. However, the costs of space travel have come down enormously with the entrance of these private companies. You're talking about doing something that used to be only done by a few of the world's most powerful governments and cost billions and billions of dollars. And now, you know, someone can book for tens of millions of dollars and go to orbit for a few days or even a couple hundred thousand dollars and go to the edge of space for a few minutes. And it's really about launching regularly, launching safely, and bringing down the cost overall. We need these uh, spacecraft to be flying quite, uh, you know, the, we need these spacecraft to be flying hundreds of missions successfully before people would be willing to say, you know what, yeah, I'll pony up $50,000 to do this. Okay, let's get to our sound check. Here's what the top newsmakers were talking about on CNBC today. Jobs, chip shortages, and empty car lots nationwide. I think the really important question here is the worker shortage. 9.3 million open jobs right now. It's a complex 
problem. Some of it is that we don't have skilled workers and we need better training. Some of it is that we're still paying people to stay home and we have to stop that. Some of it is that we need to open more childcare and have better access to childcare. And some of it is that we need more H-1B and H-2B visas and more access to global talent. We are seeing shortages across all end market segments. We see supply in the industry being short through the end of this year and into calendar year 2022. We see calendar year 22 as a robust business environment for Micron as well. In managing our supply prudently, and Micron inventories are running very lean as well, and we are making sure that we are able to manage the best mix of our business. Five years ago, we came in and bought the business for a little north of a, a billion dollars. The value today is two and a half times um, uh, the value of when we purchased the company. So when we talked to investors and they saw that we doubled the revenue and doubled the EBITDA during this uh, time frame, they really love the traction that we're doing. In the first half year of 2021, we delivered more cars than in the entire year 2012. So Porsche is really having a momentum in the U.S. market. Before we go, let's get to today's numbers round. We'll start with 17. Today was a big day for the world of donuts. Krispy Kreme went public on the New York Stock Exchange, but its IPO left most investors disappointed. The stock's initial price came in at $17 per share, which is way below the $21 to $24 that Wall Street was expecting. Krispy Kreme stock closed higher today, but its muted debut came during a crowded week of IPOs, with names like Chinese ride-hailing business Didi hitting U.S. markets as well. Next. 15. Earlier this afternoon, New York City prosecutors unveiled a 15-count criminal indictment against the Trump Organization and its CFO, Alan Weisselberg. Now, the Manhattan District Attorney's Office alleges that Weisselberg and the organization avoided taxes on pay for the CFO and other executives. They also claim Weisselberg's personal expenses, like rent and utilities for his Upper West Side apartment, were covered by the organization. Now, the indictment says the scheme lasted between March of 2005 and the end of last month, so about 16 years. Former President Donald Trump, who still owns the Trump Organization, called the indictment a, quote, political witch hunt by the radical left Democrats. And finally, 70 million. Financial regulators are coming down on retail trading app Robinhood. The Financial Industry Regulatory Agency, known as FINRA, handed down a $70 million penalty to Robinhood. Now, FINRA said that the company hurt customers with its options trading practices and those crippling outages earlier in the year during the whole mania with GameStop. But that's not the only news out of Robinhood today. Soon, investors will be able to buy Robinhood stock on Robinhood. The company announced its plans to go public under the ticker Hood later this year. You can read all about the company's growth and profitability ahead of its debut by going to CNBC.com and downloading the CNBC app. That's it for After Hours. We'll be back here every Tuesday and Thursday, so be sure to catch us then.